Hi, my name is Maciej and today I'm going to talk to you about 6CLI intro and updates. But before jumping into further discussions, let me quickly introduce you what 6CLI is and what's our mission. So 6CLI or special interest group devoted to command line interfaces accessing Kubernetes cluster is a group of people devoted to making CLIs better. Our main project is kubectl, kubectl, or kubectl. No matter how you prefer naming it, it's still our main goal to ensure that working with any Kubernetes cluster is easy and fun. Cube control allows creating plugins and as such we provide you with libraries, CLI runtime and a sample CLI plugin which shows how to implement plugins. We have three sub projects, Customize, which allows you to customize raw pre-template YAMs leaving the original YAM untouched and usable as is and work with Kubernetes resources. Crew, which is a plugin manager for the aforementioned CLI plugins. Crew also has a crew index where you can register your own plugins so that other consumers can e easier, easily find them. Finally, Kui. Kui is a graphical wrapper around QB, con QB control. It allows, it provides sortable tables and much more uh, graphical rich user interface than the usual QB control which you have in the command line. 6CLI has four people that are working on ensuring that the SIG is, in, is going in the right direction. We have two tech leads, that will be Philip Wittrock and myself, and we have three chairs, Eddie, Sean, and myself. The three of us are responsible for organizational stuff for the SIG, whereas the tech leads are responsible for the technical direction of the SIG CLI. Our meetings are happening on Wednesdays, every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. European time, at noon US Eastern, and 9 a.m. Pacific time. On top of that, we have monthly box crops happening at the same time. It so happens that the next meeting, is, the next 6CLI meeting is on May 19th, whereas the monthly box crop will be happening the next week, which is May 26th. You can find all of us in the 6CLI Kubernetes Slack channel. On top of that, we also have our mailing list group, where you can reach us, ask for help, or provide suggestions for improvements. Now, let's jump into the main changes that happened over the past couple of months to the 6CLI. First of all, welcome Kui, which completed the transition up to Kubernetes 6 repository. Kui was originally started by IBM folks. Big shout out goes to Paul, Nick, Mengting and Mark who diligently spent a couple of months of their work moving the CUI repository under Kubernetes 6 organization. The next important milestone that we just recently reached was upgrading Customize in the Kubernetes repository, named specifically in the kubectl. So if you're familiar, a couple of releases back, we included Customize by default in Cube Control. It was accessible either as a subcommand for kubectl 
or it was accessible through dash k which was which could flag which could be used to many different commands in kubectl unfortunately due to dependencies issues in customize we were stuck with a very old version 2 of customize in cube control for a very long time jeff and the entire community gathered around customize work diligently over the past couple of months to ensure that the upgrade was possible finally in march of this year we've completed the transition and kubectl ships the latest customize available we don't expect too many significant changes so your pre-existing customized file should still work the api hasn't changed be between the previous version and the current version of customize in kubectl although some some of the bug fixes technical depth was addressed in the meantime most likely the only changes that we are expecting or problems will be coming from the fact of improper usage of the past version of customize we do hope that a broader community will be able to provide us with feedback as well as provide some suggestions how to better improve this situation in the future the next important development that is happening in the 6CLI community is observability. A couple months ago or even years, Phil created a proposal to send cube control commands as headers through requests. This way we would be able to identify which commands are being used the most how people are using cube control and on top of that ensure that the people are using the most the latest possible version sean spent a couple of weeks this year and put together a alpha implementation of this functionality currently if you invoke cube control with a specific flag with a specific environment variable the commands that you're executing along with the flags are being passed through headers to the API server where we can then investigate what's going on and how clients are clients or users are using cube control. We hope that this will allow us to improve cube control and the user experience in the upcoming months. The feature is still alpha, so you have to explicitly opt in. As I mentioned before, there's a cube control underscore command underscore headers environment variable that you need to set to true to enable this functionality. Sean will most likely will be working on this functionality over the next couple of months. If you're interested in working on this, feel free to reach out to Sean and ask him for work to be done as well as suggestions so that we can improve this situation. One last mention that I wanted to include here is a change coming from Paco who created a default container annotation. This way the commands were the commands such as exec logs and similar that are working with multiple containers in a pod can pick a default container normally the default container is always the first one in the yaml file but if you want to explicitly state which default container a command should pick you can do so by annotating your particular pod with a cube control that kubernetes that io slash default container annotation this way when you invoke either logs or exec you'll get information directly from the default container finally 
I wanted to make a sh to shout out to Zhao and a bunch of other people that gather around a task that we had, which was about removing generators from kubectl create commands. This spans several months or even releases, if I'm correct. And thanks to the hard work of the community and Zhao, who took the leadership in driving this feature forward, we are able to say that 90, we're about 95% there. Most of the generators have been removed and the code in kubectl create commands is much more tested and much more readable. So big thanks to all that are involved in this effort. At this point in time, I would like to focus on the future of Cube 6 CLI. There is many things that we would like to work on, but there's only so few of us. If you're interested in working on any of the features that I'm going to talk about, feel free to reach out to us. One of such developments that we would like to undertake in the upcoming months is the return code normalization. Currently, kubectl only provides two return codes in their commands. There's a zero and non-zero exit codes. If you're familiar with many of the Linux CLIs, you are aware that uh, the commands are returning different error codes depending on what the situation was. We would like to be able, and there were many requests from the community, that the kubectl commands, subcommands, are returning further information about what went wrong, not only through a description, but also through an error code. That helps with scripting and including uh, kubectl in further automation. automation. So Ricardo put together a enhancement. We're looking for interested in com uh, contributors who will put together a proposal, walk through all the existing commands and figure out what is the possible outcomes that we could get. What are the possible return codes that we could have from the kubectl command? I have a several suggestions. I'm pretty sure that others in the community have suggestions as well. This topic was discussed several times during our past meetings, and I know that there will be many opinions when developing this topic. If you're interested in, feel free to reach out to us. Join one of our six CLI calls and talk to us about your proposal. We would like to hear from you and we would like to be able to work on this further. There is one another development that I would like to bring to your attention. Over the past couple of releases, we've been consistently trying to unify how the commands work. You probably are familiar with the option structure and the flow, which includes three methods, complete, validate and run. If not, I recommend to you to watch our previous recordings or our meetings where we describe how the, those three methods provide a consistent flow across all of the commands. We've managed to get to 95, maybe 99 even percent of the commands transformed into this flow, but we're not there yet. We're slowly addressing the remaining commands. But at this point in time, we would like to decouple the current business logic of every single kubectl command from the Cobra. Cobra library is the library that we are using for providing the entire command line interface. Unfortunately, the decision that we've taken in the past caused that the Cobra library is very tightly coupled with every single command. Like I've mentioned before, the previous effort simplified 
commands and unified how they work. Currently, we want to go one step further and decouple them so that other consumers of kubectl or parts of kubectl can easily get the same behavior that the kubectl provides. At this, especially that there was a lot of requests for moving certain kubectl functionality to the server, which is not always possible. So we're hoping that with the help of the community, we will be able again to address those issues. Sean volunteered to create a template, which basically means creating a PR showing how this should be addressed. As soon as the template is available, we are more than welcome to see PRs from other people in the community, even new contributors, addressing and solving this problem. We're hoping that this will even more allow um, reuse of kubectl functionality across the community. This is basically all I wanted, I have prepared for you today. I encourage you again to join our six CLI bi-weekly meetings and our monthly box crops. The latter are very good for newcomers as well because during our box crops, we go through issues and pull requests and we allow newcomers to pick a very easy task to work on. Our bi-weekly meetings are a very good place to raise issues about feature requests, plug interesting kubectl plugins, or in general about your feedback about kubectl or any of our sub-projects. We are more than happy and welcome any feedback and any suggestions, either through our 6CLI Slack channel or uh, our mailing group. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great of the rest of the KubeCon.